Hello and a very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. So welcome to the channel and this is something very new to the channel. Today we're in X-Plane 12. Uh, very excited to be making a video in this new simulator. So I've spent approximately three weeks just uh, configuring a few things, getting some add-ons installed and getting them ready to show you this flight today. And we're going to go from Fort Lauderdale up to Newark. Um, before we get into the flight deck, you probably noticed the uh, ramp is actually damp ar around the aircraft. Got some pretty nasty weather in Fort Lauderdale, but let's head now into the flight deck and start doing some planning. So before we get going, do excuse any sort of video imperfections. I'm still tweaking the settings yet. It did take a while for me to get X-Plane properly optimised to run on my system. So we are of course in the TOLIS A321 and this is the updated version for X-Plane 11. So there's a few new things in um, in the updated version that it brings you. So first is in relation to the at and the mech buttons down here. So the right hand button, if you press that, you get a pop out menu that allows you to open and cab close the cabin doors from page one. And then on page two, you've got an option to choose what passengers you have, the number of passengers that you want and to load and unload them. Hopefully they're all being incredibly nice and you don't need to unload them. Go to the mech button and on there you've got five sub pages as you can see i've connected external power to the aircraft and that's selected on the overhead panel um, we've also got low pressure air that i'm just uh, feeding into the cabin in the absence of the packs running the chocks are on and because of that we'll just go ahead and we'll release the parking brake over to page two that's where you can control your pushback. Page three, refuel amount. I'm going to use that in a moment. Page four, it's a cargo. So I've just chose today to have 220 passengers. That gives me a zero fuel weight of uh, 70 tons, but we are going to need to work in pounds. And there's a, an option on there as well to perform de-icing. Let's go back to page three then. And the fuel that I need today is 11 tons or 24,200 pounds. So the two pluses and the two minuses, of course you would expect those to go up in major units, so in this case we're going up in two ton increments. So let's go to, uh, we'll take one away, so we're at 21,400 and we'll click the plus sign and load up the remaining fuel there, 24,000, uh, yeah, 24,200. Okay, let's request refuel. So we'll just go over to the fuel page and we'll just verify that refueling is occurring. And there you have it. You can see by the fuel quantity that's increasing. And TOLIS do model a refueling truck as well. I've configured my SIM brief. I've done that into the IC, uh, ICSC, um, the TOLIS interactive control system. Um, so I've configured that. So if we now just go to the init request function on init A, uh, line right to, and just press that, we'll get the flight plan data link in progress. Now I'm going to take a few of these topics offline um, and do just a few separate videos as well. So do look out for those. Highly recommend you subscribe so you don't miss anything and certainly do like the video as well. Hopefully you will enjoy this one. So our alternate is Boston, that's our flight number, Spirit Air uh, 1215, it's the latitude and longitude that we're currently at, if you wanted to verify those. Cost index will be 39, and our initial cruise altitude will be 330, where the temperature it's saying is minus 39, and the tropo pause there looks to be quite high. Let's now clear the uh, Perf data link uplink message, and we'll go to the flight plan page. So on here, that's of course as we'd expect to find it. Our first waypoint there is Dukan. Uh, okay, so what SID do we want? So 10 right will be our departure runway. So a Felix 1 departure without any transition on there. And then we'll just go ahead and insert that flight plan. Let's just check the waypoints. 10 right. It's just scrolling up through the plan. 
to Felix and then we'll make a left turn there at this, that discontinuity up to Duncan. And what I might do at that point is just go direct before we actually reach Felix. So let's just clear that discontinuity. Insert that. Just scroll through the flight plan to make sure that there are no further discontinuities and that the route is heading in the right direction. So when we get to, uh, that's quite an apt waypoint, depending on how you pronounce it, I'm just going to say Foxtrot Alpha Kilo. When we get there, there's a discontinuity, and that's where we will have entered our star before we get to top of descent. Right and um, Merkdu. Let's just choose the flight plan page for that. So ground distance is 1039. Now the flight plan does give us some um, fairly beneficial tailwinds today. So let's go through the next part of that. Um, normally here, go to the RadNav page. I'm not going to program anything in. So it's straight back to init and init B. So our zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight center of gravity. Let's just check that that's what we expect. So 154,000 pounds with a zero fuel weight center of gravity of 28.2 and of course you can always verify that using the ISCS screen here so 28.6 let's just make a, a minor uh, adjustment there so we are in keyboard mode so we just go forward slash 28.6 that goes in there it knows the block fuel it's got that from uh, the flight plan, so £24,400, just £200 different uh, to what I've got written down here. OK, so we shouldn't expect, once the refuelling is completed, we shouldn't expect um, that to deplete. We're not yet running on the APU. But let's have a look at the init fuel prediction page. This is one bit that I'm really keen to just show you how to get a bit more value out of this page. You can see at the moment we've got an extra time there of 15 minutes when we get to Newark but what doesn't this know about yet? So to make full use of this you're all of course used to putting in there an accurate zero fuel weight but it doesn't know about the things that I've mentioned that are beneficial to us i.e. the winds. Swing over then to your right McDo, go to the winds page and today for the benefit of this to make it easier I'm just going to use the wind request button. So we're just going to hit that. Wind data uplink. Clear. Let's just check that it's got that on the next phase. OK, perfect. So if we now go back to the flight plan page, our predicted flight plan is 2 hours 10 minutes so that's more in line there with the with the forecast so it does show that it's factoring in those winds. But Back onto the left hand um, page, so back onto the left hand McDo on the init fuel prediction page, you can see now our extra time has increased by 11 minutes up to 2.3 tons, um, 2.3 um, thousand pounds there. So my question is, do I want to carry that extra fuel? So that's probably about a ton. Thinking about, um, you know, I'd be familiar with the videos I normally fly over in Europe, but. For the purpose of this, let's just see what happens if we reduced the block fuel. Now, of course, at this point, it doesn't make any sense to do that. We've already got uh, 24,200 pounds on there. Um, but let's say if we just made that, so you'd obviously do this before you refueled, uh, 23.0. So you can see now how it just reduces the extra time there. But of course, that would reduce the trip time as well, or the or trip fuel that you need because of course in order to carry the fuel you need to burn fuel and in order to burn the fuel you need to carry the fuel so it's a, a circle there so 24.2 we'll just put that back see if it increases the trip time yeah uh, the trip um, I beg your pardon the trip fuel 14.1 uh, thousand pounds of fuel okay so we've got plenty there to play with when we get to Newark probably not such a bad thing because I would expect um, in real life that that airport is incredibly busy and depending upon what time of day you arrive holding would be likely. So to the next page and uh, we need to enter our figures, our v-speeds and our takeoff data. So we're going to make use of the new takeoff data um, on board 
calculation so let's go to the uplink and we'll request that now I've been playing about with this um, on quite a few times now so let's just go ahead though and enter the wins in there which is about a hundred at uh, 15 knots so that's going to go into the magnetic wind section there anything in green of course you can't change that and that's just not limited to the um, takeoff data page that's a standard across the Airbus FMGC let's go and put in there uh, we'll use flat one for departure and I think that forces it then to do the calculations based on flat one but let's now go and say take off data request give it a few moments for it to get its calculator out and do whatever it does there for us once it's done you'll get the takeoff data uplink message go to receive takeoff data and you can now review the performance figures that it's proposing uh, and notice how I said proposing as well because you probably notice as well in a lot of my videos if you haven't seen them I do implore you to check the data that you're expecting check what the FMGC is spitting out at you or check what the FMC is spitting out at you in the case of a Boeing don't just accept those figures blindly we can all make mistakes in these processes and it can kind of snowball down to give you say some low V speeds or something that's just just not right so just spend a few moments checking measure twice and cut once so shall we take a flexible takeoff or shall we go with a uh, toga now due to the conditions that I've mentioned I'm just going to use a toga temp today so that will be our V speeds V1 and VR at 151 and V2 at 155 and it's got flat one and trim down 0.4 units let's now go and say insert and this is one area again where I'm saying don't just accept that the computer has got it right verify that's what you expect verify that's what you expect no flex takeoff um, value is in there of course because we are using a toga temp let's now go to the progress page verify the cruise altitude is what we expect that's 330 optimum is 331 so that's a nice cruise altitude uh, relative to the optimum altitude and here's our recommended max level so it can't go any higher than flight level 357 let's just pop in there the ICAO pair uh, ICAO code for Newark that goes in there um, shows us there that as the crow flies 926 miles on a bearing of 024 um, secondary flight plan I normally like to copy that and um, just make it a copy of the active plan nothing else um, don't forget though if you are doing that you need to press the flight plan button again make it green and that shows that that's your active flight plan before I talk any more now's probably a good time to switch on the APU so let's go ahead put the master switch to on don't immediately go and click the start button what you're waiting for down here is on the APU page you're waiting for it to say flap open and once it says that you can go ahead and put the press the start switch and there we get the message so let's go back up to the overhead click start your choice if you want to go and put the APU bleed on straight away um, some people say maybe leave it a couple of minutes in case there's any gases that's built up in the APU that doesn't of course apply in the simulator let's get switch on the APU bleed um, fuel pumps now that we've done refueling we'll switch uh, the fuel pumps back to the I would like to say on but in Airbus talk that's the normal position isn't it so external power not going to uh, disconnect that just yet let's give the APU a few moments there just to spool up so I've got one that I made earlier so now you've got the green figures in this box here titled APU Gen you know that the APU is now providing sufficient power so let's go ahead to the overhead panel again and we're now going to switch off the external power or disconnect that from the aircraft that's not a physical disconnect that's a, uh, a button of course the physical disconnect part happens down here on the mech button let's go and switch off the external power um, 
we've also now got the packs that are working as well. If we go to the bleed page, you can verify that that's happening. Okay, so what we can do now, ask our ground operator to disconnect the low pressure air and it's going to disconnect the chocks, but what I will do first is put back on the parking brake. That's there, just verifying while we're down here. Engine mode select is normal, fuel cutoff switches are off, and the thrust levers are of course in idle. So, chocks away, as it were. Uh, let's just check that our doors are closed. That's on the uh, on this one, and we can do that on the doors page as well. So just have a play around with this part. Works in the same way as the uh, ICSC, in so much that you've got the three settings closed, open, or auto. So time to start to get on our way up to Newark. Let's just go up to the FCP and what we need to do is set our initial altitude of 4000. Over to the left you'll note I've got the Q&H set to 2981 and we should just put the flick this over so it displays the pressure setting in the same unit of 2981. Let's go ahead, we'll switch on the left and right flight director, verifying that speed and heading are now in manage mode, and the same with the altitude. Just checking then, down on the FMA, we've got blank climb nav 1FD2, and that's exactly as we'd expect. So for our uh, initial departure, our taxi out to the runway, I'm not going to do a pushback, we'll just start the engines, light them up, uh, go forward and make a left. Let's just check the overhead as well. Seat belts are on. Uh, no smoking's on. Do I want the economy flow on? I'll just switch that off. Um, electric, we've got a fault and a fault Gen 1, Gen 2. That's absolutely fine. OK, let's put the uh, beacon light on and we'll now go ahead and run our before start checklist. So the cockpit preparation is complete. Signs are on. Fuel quantity, so we've verified that. Uh, it's now reading £24,100. Takeoff data is set and it's going to be a TOGA departure today and the Barrow F 2981 and that's set both sides. Now probably what we should do is just address this down here which is showing a negative at the moment so let me just get uh, the update. Let's just see if there's a more updated pressure setting to that. 2982 is what the uh, METAR on the web is saying. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is pretty much at sea level um, but we do appear here to have quite a pressure difference. Let's go back down to about there, 2985. So I am using real world weather. I uh, guess there might be a slight dis discrepancy between what that's currently uh, putting into the sim and what the metal is showing. Uh, but that but does verify with the airfield elevation. Um, coming down then below the line, windows and doors, they're closed. Anti-skid and nose wheel steering uh, that's as required. Beacons on, thrust levers are in idle. Um, you've seen me check that. Let me just do a forward and back just to make sure that the... Uh, yep, just to make sure that the uh, Thrustmaster is working. I do note though that whoever parked this aircraft uh, left the flaps in the one position. So a bit of a, a note on the pad and a telling off coming up in due course. Thrust levers idle, parking brake is set, mobile devices are off. Um, one last thing, let's go ahead, we'll just put the ground charts on the aviator's tablet. Okay, so there we are, in uh, as our position relative to uh, the rest of the airfield at uh, Fort Lauderdale. Let's go ahead and start the engines. So I do have a Thrustmaster throttle, so I'm just going to move the switch on there over to the start position. Just like give that a moment. It's a good idea just to check the bleed air uh, and that the pressure is diverted away from the pack so that you've got sufficient air to start the engines. So let's bring up the engine page and let's go ahead. Using the switch again on the Thrustmaster TCA, or Thrustmaster throttle, let's go ahead and start engine number one. Let's just verify the parameters here. So it's an IAE engine. So of course you get the EPR value on top, followed by the temperature and then the N1 value. You 
can see a few things are happening and you can just hear the uh, mild sort of uh, very faint sound from the engine fuel flow is increasing there's the EGT started to rise a lot easier of course than uh, a lot more straightforward than starting it up on a Boeing it's just one switch so everything's rising there uh, yep okay and what we're just looking for now is the avail light there it goes or the avail um, text to show on EPA that just displays momentarily let's go ahead we'll start engine 2 okay so we have two good starts let's go ahead and we'll just complete our after start actions so I'm just going to go over to the transponder and just put in a random value so I'm not flying on any air traffic control network so that's that sorted engine motor selector goes back to norm we'll arm the spoilers let's check the trim next by means of the flight control page that's 0.3 units up I recall it needs to be uh, down 0.4 units I have noticed, I think it's on the A340 where it seems to set this for you it's a Tollis A340 of course I'm referring to um, flight plan page is back there okay and um, we'll go up as well we'll set the auto brakes to max say so, still tweaking here with the settings so uh, don't take this as the final product but I am noticing a bit like P3D that I have to zoom into things to make them clearer uh, flaps can now go to the flap one position just go ahead and move the flap lever and let's go ahead to the overhead panel and we'll just switch off the APU bleed and the APU master switch taxi light can go to taxi um, but while we're down here we'll just do our flight control checks so that's elevators down neutral elevators up neutral ailerons left checked and ailerons right checked and now we're going to go with the uh, rudders so full left center and full right or as near to full right as I can do with a dog that's decided to uh, rest themselves on the rudder pedals uh, cabin check we'll do that in a moment take off config we'll test that now normally do uh, quite a few of these things when I'm on the way out to the runway okay so let's just have a look right and a look left got a few aircraft around there a few jet blues of various liveries um, we're just going to go out and sort of go uh, make a U-turn so parking brakes released uh, we are clear so we're rolling forwards a bit and off we go there I probably want to think about just bringing the engines back to idle so just go straight behind us here so yeah some of the uh, graphics I admit probably could look a bit better but let's see uh, let's see how the flight goes visibility today is uh, not too good at all so where's our point that we need to be at uh, probably just straight ahead and then I think it's towards uh, Quebec Ooh. okay see what they've done with the standing water but um, does it look realistic or not as I say still need to do a lot of work on my graphic settings but uh, I thought y'all would appreciate the video of uh, X-Plane 12 I would imagine a lot of people have uh, got this or certainly installed the uh, demo version as I did um, and then in terms of the overall other items that I had on X-Plane 11 I've not uh, installed too many at all just got the basics in order to do some, uh, some test flying 
have to start a checklist. We probably should have done that. So the anti-ice, um, not required. Temperature and the tat uh, will be well above 10 degrees on departure. Uh, Anti-skid nose wheel steering. Okay, on. Here comes status. Uh, we can probably now... Let me just uh, line the uh, plane up there on the yellow taxi line. That's always a good good thing to do, of course. Just give a bit of power. And then let's just have a look where we are. So, not too long here. Uh, Juliet 4, Juliet 3, Juliet 1, and then we'll be on our way. So let's go ahead, alert the cabin, and let's do the takeoff config check. That's all green or no blue, depending upon which operator uh, you've seen various videos for, or who you fly for. If there are any real world pilots watching this, I'd be incredibly humbled. Okay, so we're coming up to uh, the various holding points and before take of check, flight controls have been checked. Flap setting is uh, 1 plus F. Briefing and performance, so 10, uh, 10 right, that's confirmed. ECAM memo, no blue. Below the line, take off runway. And uh, take off runway is 10 right, and the packs are remaining on. Let's just put the strobes on. As we uh, as we line up here, I say line up. I'm uh, probably a bit over that line. But let's just see. Nothing coming along. Let's bring up the uh, the sim chart. I have actually done a lot of flights in the 340, so if I'm a bit over the line, uh, that's probably why probably thinking I've got a in my mind I'm probably thinking there's a much bigger plane uh, behind. Right, we'll just come to a uh, uh, a crawl, not an exact stop. Okay, let's go then. You're probably going to hear a few call outs and that'll be my voice and that's just my uh, first officer script that I use. So, engine's up. It's about 1.2 EPA. stable and off we go so breeze is coming from the uh, east stroke southeast so expected to dance on the rudder pedals that's 80 checked coming up to 100 should be able to release the uh, pressure there from the side stick here's 140 just about in the middle of the runway and there's positive rate with the gear up so just coming up to the flight director with that horizontal green line there there we go hands pretty much off the uh, side stick now then so it's just maintaining there a one, 180 knots just got a bit bumpy there's a, a report of uh, mild turbulence on the initial climb out. Let's go then with autopilot 1 and just waiting then for climb power to enunciate. There we go. So back to the climb detent. Just checking the PFD. Let's just pop that out anyway so that we can uh, see things a bit clearer. I normally do that on the landing just to uh, pop that out so we can see the flight director. So let's see how these uh, clouds and this weather will look. So just passing through 2,600 for 2,000, uh, sorry, for 4,000 feet. So you see the airspeed there just bouncing around a bit. Let's bring out the navigation display as well. So I've not got much of a breeze, but uh, you can see that bouncing around. Just watching the speed. I'm just going to get uh, get prepared to retract the flaps etc. So let's go now then with flaps up. Yeah so you see that just uh, jumping around there the sort of speed acceleration so a bit bumpy. Let's just pop those in for a moment. Just going to assume now that we're cleared up to uh, 
17,000 feet. So just push the uh, altitude knob and that will remain in managed uh, managed altitude mode. So in that case it's now managed climb mode. So we're making that left turn, let's just zoom in and zoom out rather on the navigation display. And I did say I'd want to make a sort of early left turn and back up to uh, Dukan, I think it's pronounced. Um, so we have got quite a few waypoints in the middle there. Let's just see how many miles we've got to go there. Um, 1030. Let's do that direct now. So let's hit the direct button. Dukan. Insert. And that's took about 30 miles off the flight. Uh, estimated fuel on board on arrival is now double figures, but do remember that that's in pounds, thousands of pounds, and not in uh, not in tons. So that's around about four and a half. It's less than four and a, four and a half tons. Okay. So we're just making the uh, left turn there. Let's zoom in a bit. Or zo Let's zoom out a bit. I'll try and say zoom out from now on. Uh, do I have the TCAS on as well? Just verifying that uh, we did everything. Okay, let's disarm the uh, ground spoilers. It's disarmed. Uh, let's just check everything. So, runway, turn off lights, they could go off. And the nose lights can go to the off position. So, so far, all. Uh, all is as expected. It looks like we're going to be punching through this cloud layer soon. Um, now that we're pretty much going in a in a straight line, so we reach Dukan at uh, 200 miles, 200 miles away. Top of climb is going to be uh, north of uh, Orlando. It's around uh, place north of Orlando where I know there's an airfield up there called Sanford. So that's where we'll reach top of climb. I would put the airport page on, but it might get a bit crowded as we are in the States. And it, that's fine. So, uh, which one are we looking for? Tell you what, we'll have a look at that as we get uh, closer to top of climb. Here's 10,000. So, of course, now the aircraft is going to lower the nose. And it's accelerating up to uh, climb speed there. That you can just see up on the magenta arrow as that comes into view. What is that weather doing? It's a bit of rain then. A bit of rain and some clouds. Is that lightning or something? I don't know. I'm just going to mute my uh, my volume. I'll, uh, I'll leave you with some of these views. And uh, as we've spoke a lot on this video, I'll just show you the landing into Newark. And we'll certainly, as we do more videos, you know, I like to spend a lot of time on the uh, departure planning and the arrival planning. And uh, but I'm really getting quite off put at the moment by that uh, by that flashing around. So I'll mute this. Let's go and have a look in the cabin and see see what we can see from a window view out there.
Okay, so this is the moment that you've been waiting for. This is our approach into Newark on runway 2 to right. What I might do in a moment is sidestep actually onto 2 to left. 2,500. So let's put the aircraft into uh, managed speed just by pushing the speed knob there. So we'll remain in auto thrust for the approach. Let's go now then with gear down. So speed reducing. There's quite a bit of activity down there on the runway. I'll decide ASAP. Uh, we'll go ahead and just ping the uh, cabin crew as well. Got a message to say auto thrust off, but that is not the case. So we're just waiting now then to do flap full. Let's go with flap three. And what I'm going to do is take the aircraft. Uh, so we are showing us uh, two hours 33 for our flight time. So if you recall, we were looking at uh, about two hours, 10 minutes. Sim's just a bit jittery there. But... Uh, Nothing there to concern us about. Graphics not ideal, but we are in an area that I would say is incredibly um, graphically demanding. Flap full, just bringing the nose back a bit. Just uh, probably ignoring now, well, not probably, ignoring the glide slope. Just having to do this visually. Uh, certainly ignoring the localizer. So the glide slope's still good to. Uh, to follow. So just intentionally got the nose up a little bit there, 600 foot per minute. Now bringing that down. Let's go with the displays out as well. Uh, water brakes will be low for landing. And we'll use reverse thrust, of course. So just bringing that uh, rate of descent back down a bit, 700, maybe 800 feet per minute. Still got the breeze from the right hand side. 22 right is looking quite busy. Uh, hopefully this is a good decision to land on 22 left. 500. We shall see, just bringing the nose back up a bit. 400. Just having to do a bit of input there into the uh, ailerons. To 300. Keep that wing a bit low on the right hand side breeze is coming from. Just bring the nose back up again. This is not overly smooth but let's go back down again. Nose back down again. There we go. So you can see the, the touchdown Minimum. zone there. And continue. Over the threshold then. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, 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 10. Just flaring. Five. That's what happens when you flare a bit too too much. Doesn't go that smooth, but uh, let's see what the touchdown rate is. So we've got reverse. Water brakes doing the work. I'm having to apply a lot of rudder there. Just with that breeze from the uh, right of the nose. Stone reverses. And we'll come off at the next taxiway. It's just here. Two hours 35 then, as we said. Uh, unstable localised deviation. Yeah, um, no surprise. That did just take my attention there. So let's just do power on just to vacate the runway. Shouldn't have allowed myself to get distracted there. Obviously, when you're using a, a utility such as stable approach, it is quite rightly querying uh, your flight plan, uh, what's in the FMGC, and it's going to report on that. So let's make this right. Once we cross over the line, let's switch the strobes and landing lights off. 
So that concludes our flight today from Fort Lauderdale into Newark. Hope you've enjoyed that, but do please remember that this is still beta software. This was flown in X-Plane 12 Beta 4. At the time of doing the post-production for this video, X-Plane uh, uh, 12 Beta 5 has just uh, been launched. So the best way to see some fantastic uh, X-Plane 12 videos in the future is of course to hit that subscribe button and the like button. And I look forward to seeing you on a future video. Take care, I'll see you soon, bye bye.